All right, so big data in under 30 seconds. Phone. Phone has lots of information. It has my geolocation. It has all my phone calls, my text messages, my data. When I go riding, I have a heart rate monitor. It has all of these things. That's our y-axis. Time. We have all of this time. One day, a second, uh, you know, a minute, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, a year, 20 years. We're constantly creating this data and creating information here. What's big data? The z-axis. The axis of having all of these phones, all of these people generating all of that information all at once and companies and governments being able to create big data sets that triangulate and poly hierarchically create data sets based off of all of that information. Thank you. All right, so I just gave you all a quick explanation of big data. This next video is going to be uh, an in-depth look at you know, how I kind of started thinking about big data and then really going into the finite ways of thinking about this z-axis that I described. So I hope you enjoy it. Hi, welcome to Joey's Helping Others. Um, today I'm at uh, the Hi-Fi store, Dreaminoids Hi-Fi. This is a shop I run with Christian Rios. Um, I was shooting some other videos and I thought, hey, I have this set up. Might as well do a talk I've been wanting to kind of share with you all uh, for some time. It's something I've been talking about for a long time and uh, I feel like it illustrates uh, my point very well, which is this talk's gonna be about big data. Now, big data uh, is kind of this idea that, um, you know, it, it's a term that's thrown around a lot. People are always talking about big data is the next big thing, you know, uh, the cloud, computing power, artificial intelligence, you know, all of these different kinds of topics. And one of the things that um, I, you know, I've, I'm a computer nerd, for those that don't know, I'm a huge tech nerd. Um, I've been into hacking and uh, both hardware and software. I've worked on open source software projects. I've worked on commercial projects. I, um, I just have a really big background in it. I've worked with uh, uh, startups and gone to San Francisco and I build computers and I don't know, I'm just knee deep in it. I also study the culture of it and, uh, and I have a PhD in communications, uh, new media specifically. So this is something that I'm not just passionate about as an amateur, but something that uh, I'm passionate about as an academic as well. And so a lot of times I have students ask me about big data or I'll have people that I'm either consulting with or professionals that I run into that are either in the news or in media or in some kind of communication, studio, production, uh, computer um, development space and uh, our software development, all kinds of different spaces, technological development. Um, and we end up talking about big data and I kind of just was thinking one day, I was like, well, what's, you know, how do I explain this? And so uh, I kind of got this really simple way. I, I get my iPhone and, um, and I kind of say this, which is what I'm gonna do right now. Uh, I have an iPhone here, you see it? Yeah, this is an iPhone. Now, um, I do a lot of things on my iPhone. Like, and, and I know I kind of sound salesy right now, but I really do, right? Um, so what are some things that I do with my iPhone? Well, I take a lot of photos, right? So uh, what I wanna do now is I wanna say, okay, so I take a lot of photos, so let's, let's cre create um, an x-axis, right, and a y-axis, okay? And everything that I do on my phone, I'm gonna put on my y-axis. So I take photos, okay. Um, what happens when I take a photo? Well, uh, if I have GPS enabled, it will know where I took my photo. Uh, if it has facial recognition, it will know who was in the photo. Um, similar things for video. Now, uh, what we're gonna use the x-axis for is time, right? We're gonna say like seconds, minutes, hours, day, week, years, you know, decades, okay? What else do I do on my phone? Well, my phone, like I said, it has GPS built in. So that's another thing that's uh, being tracked over time, right? We have, um, when, I, when I slide up and I'm looking on things on my phone, uh, up and down, if I'm checking text messages, you know, it's time stamping when I've seen them. 
uh, when I look at images, when I'm on Facebook, right? If I'm on Instagram, right? I can slide up and down. It's keeping those kinds of information of how I'm viewing things. It has an accelerometer, so it knows moving up and down. Um, it has a, a flashlight, so it'll know when the light's on and off. Okay, it has sensors for knowing how dim and how bright to make the light, right? I also use apps um, with hardware interfaces. So uh, one of the things that y'all may or may not know about me, if you watch my last video, is that I love to ride. So on my bike, I have a power meter. It tells me how much power I'm putting output. Um, and then I use Strava and I track that when I go and ride. It tracks where I've ridden, how long, my power output. I have a heart rate monitor that I wear, a Wahoo heart rate monitor. That's going to the app, it's telling my heart rate over time. Right, some of y'all might have an Apple Watch that does that, okay? So we have this big stack of things that are going on on my phone and we have time. And for each of these things that are going on, we're tracking our information, right? We can have a set of data about me of Joey stopped writing, opened up this app, looked at it. He looked at this photo for this long on this site. Um, watched this video, his heart rate was this, right? He was outside, it was this bright at this location. So that's data. That's what I would call data. That's like a data set, okay? Now a lot of people might find that kind of scary. It's like, oh man, we're saving all of this information. For me, um, I gave up knowing that, or thinking really, that I have privacy a long time ago. That's why I just, a lot of people think I'm super extroverted, but it's really that I just, I know it's all gonna be known. Like, it's just gonna be known. Is there any way to stop it? We'll find out. But pretty much this information, this data set here, is, um, is gonna be known. At least on some levels to corporations, to governments, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, family, however you share it. And however it's taken, right? Because we live in an opt out society, not an opt-in society in the US. And so everything that you sign up for, all the EULA's end user license agreements that you sign up for, they're taking this data and they're using it to sell things back to you. They're using it for uh, governmental reasons, corporate reasons, social, cultural manipulation, all kinds of things. They'll have different names for it. They wouldn't call it cultural and social manipulation. They'll have some other name for it, like target ads, okay? Narrow casting if we want to get technical. So that's data, okay? That's data right there. So what's big data? Well, big data is the Z axis. It's the axis that goes all the way literally to you watching this, okay? It's this phone right here, right? Stacked up over time, okay? And the Z axis is literally every cell phone, every user, every, every piece of technology that's taking in this data, okay? And if we th we're thinking, what, right? We're thinking X and Y, and we have all this information about it. Think of it as just one slide after another slide, after another slide, after another slide of information, of data sets, of Excel sheets, however you wanna see it, however you wanna think about it being plotted. And there are millions to billions of me, of this kind of interface being used, right? Big data is not just this data set, okay? In the sense of having these files. What the actual big data is, is being able to extrapolate data across these files and to be able to manipulate and create information, social phenomena, cultural phenomena, societal, change, good or bad, right? Manipulation over uh, 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 propaganda through these data sets using supercomputers, using your cell phone, right? Just depends on how much crunch, number crunching you're trying to do. And that is what big data is. That's why people have been talking about big data being such a big phenomenon because now it's like my health insurance premiums are not gonna just be settled on what my data is,
but it's being extrapolated across every data set that's being created. Before, they kind of used predictive models, models that made generalizations about, well, this, we have this uh, 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 data that is what I would call dirty data, dirt data that's not completely clean and has all this information that's rich, actual uh, points. It's taking quantitative, being the study of kind of more number-based research, and qualitative information, information that is quantitative to the point that it can be qualitatively seen, which is kind of like this quasi-qualitative space where I'm able to understand if I'm uh, showing on my Instagram that I follow people of certain cultural practices, so certain social practices, and my heart rate works at this way, and these certain things affect me, and I live in this space, and I'm typically around this weather at this time of the year, right? And so I drive less or more. My insurance premiums, my health premiums, knowing how many burgers I'm eating or uh, because of my credit card, right? Or because I'm putting it in my fitness app and tracking all my, my eating habits um, is gonna be now compared to millions of people. And we're gonna have data sets that truly can, ha can be looked at and sifted through and near to real time, if not past real time. Some of y'all that are like really into big data know that there are already real time uh, spaces for this to be done with big data sets. And so anyways, uh, I get this question a lot. The simple answer is, you know, you have this X axis, you have this Y axis, the Z axis, you know, we have time, we have all of these inputs and it's the multiple users and it's this transformation in between of taking all this information and creating data sets that can show what society is doing that is really the potential of big data, okay? And that's just one part of big data, but that's the part that I think most people's uh, uh, hearts get, get pulled at. So anyways, I just thought I would share this with you because um, it's something that a lot of people talk about. It's something that when I go to civic engagement meetings and we talk about uh, issues of equity, you know, when we look at equity issues, um, I want big data sets. I want big data. I want to know, you know, okay, well, you know, how many, we say people are homeless. We say people are homeless because of housing issues. Well, I want to, uh, I want to cross-reference like Zillow and Trulia and, and all these, you know, Redfin and all these different apps, both renting and uh, uh, um, purchasing with uh, crime data sets, with homelessness, with uh, drug addiction I issues and, and, that, and that geographic space and being able to create models and understanding like, you know, how people are coming in and out of that space geographically so that we can have answers that aren't just uh, uh, anecdotal, but uh, are based off of numbers that are not just informed, but have pinpointed uh, uh, abilities to it so that we can sit here and say, yes, this is what's going on. This is, you know, it's not just based off emotion, which uh, I can be very anecdotal, as a lot of y'all know. I have a lot of opinions and I share my opinions. This channel is an opinion, but uh, to me, the future is being able to have these data sets. And if uh, people, a lot of people may be um, heavily into privacy and not being able to share their data to have these data sets, that's fine with me. That would be a point actually is that, okay, well, we know that this uh, percentage of society doesn't interact, but I do know that like, because of the way of the societies that we live in, People are still going to track that. They're going to they're they're making their earnest effort. That's what public, you know, CCTVs are, or they used to be called that. Now they're just called cameras um, that just monitor people and do facial recognition. Uh, they're still trying to to turn us into numbers. And to me, it's like, okay, I, I see all the bad, but what can we do for good? You know, how can we use that to help other people? How can we use it to bring equity um, in our spaces? Because like I'm here in San Antonio, Texas, one of the biggest differences between the rich and the poor. And you know, how can we use numbers to help empower other people? So I hope you all are having a great day. I hope this didn't put you all to sleep. Um, and thank you so much for watching. Uh, I don't think I'm 100% right in everything I just said. So feel free to leave comments, correct me, uh, post links, post replies. Uh, I look at my comments, so take it easy.